it's time to check out my fully assembled Axial SCX-10 III. Is it really worth all the hype? Let's find out together. Hey everyone, Rich here from the RCNetwork.com and today it's time to check out my fully assembled Axial SCX-10 III. Of course, that is their newest 110 scale four wheel drive scaler truck. Now, if you haven't already done so, please check out my full unboxing of this kit, as well as the build review where I go over all the details of the actual chassis. And I'll have links to those right up there in the upper right-hand corner. As with all of my videos, I'll have links to every item mentioned in this video down in the video description right down below. In this full reveal video, we'll be going over the body build review, the electronics that I chose for this build, any modifications I've done thus far, the total weight of this RC, a quick compare between the SCX-10 III and a TRX-4, and finally, my overall thoughts and opinions of this build thus far. But first, let's stop by and look at this body from Axial. This thing is probably one of the most detailed bodies I've ever seen, not only from Axial, but from any other manufacturer out there. Now, when I originally opened up the box, I noticed, and I actually counted, there were 55 pre-cut holes in this body, and this was a laser cut body, so it's all ready to be painted, which was really nice. But 55 holes except a lot of accessories onto this body set. Starting up front, you can definitely see all of the detail with the cutout right here and exposing the plastic molded radiator. It actually has fans on the backside of it too, if you were to really dive in and look. Now you do have chrome plated light buckets that are all part of this one assembly right here. You do have molded plastic fenders, latches, snorkels, a top deck up here that mounts all of the windshield wipers and also these side mirrors that are very nice. Flipping it to the side here, of course, we do have the front fender, the rear fender, door handles, and also a filler cap here in the back. Finally, on the back side, we do have these red translucent light buckets for the rear. We have a license plate holder right here that acts as not only a license plate holder, but also a mount for the interior inside. And of course, the handle back here, very similar to the side handles. As we look at the underside of the body right here, you can definitely see all the reinforcements here for the fender flares. We do have the radiator piece right here that I spoke of earlier, the full interior. So you have all the way from the back deck all the way up here to the driver cockpit. So very well detailed. And of course on here, you have your hidden body mounts on the front radiator. And also back here on the back side, you also have hidden body mounts. So no body posts coming through the top of this body at all. As for the exterior of my JLU body, I decided to use Pactra's metallic blue. I know, it's a shock. And I backed it up with Outlaw Black, also from Pactra, just to give it that deep, dark blue metallic color that you're accustomed to here at the channel. As far as the interior and the JLU body, it comes with a full interior. So not only do you have that great driver's head that's included, you do have to paint that, but you also have everything inside, including seats. It's kind of like a, a half depth body. You do have a bunch of dash decals and other decals you can put on there. I painted it up with some Outlaw Black. And then on the outside of the body, I after I peeled off the overspray film, I just put on some testers dull coat to just kind of dull it out so it doesn't look like there's a bunch of latex dummies in there. As far as painting up the head, it does come white, so you do have to paint it so it doesn't look kind of weird. But I used just some regular model paint from testers. I used a metallic blue for the baseball hat, a flat tan for pretty much all the skin, and then just some black paint for the hair and just actually dotted the eyes with a Sharpie so it doesn't look too weird at all. When spraying the body, definitely pay attention to the window masks. Now, most of them are labeled, but it's a little confusing because some are labeled upside down. So I just took a few shots here of mine just to show you exactly which R1 points up versus L1 points down, that sort of thing. So just pay attention when you are putting these onto your body. And also don't forget the headlight buckets. Those aren't labeled and it's really hard to see that they're even there, but you definitely have to put those on your body so you don't spray over the headlight buckets. If not, you won't actually have any headlights. So pay attention to that when you're spraying up your body. As for the decal sheet for the interior, I ended up doing a, a little trick here where I actually cut the decals in half for the seats. It just made it a lot easier to actually apply. So you don't have to worry about that bend when you're actually getting into the crease of the seat. It just helped for putting them 
on. And also on the fronts, I left the bolsters on the side off completely. I just knew that was going to be a trouble area for where the adhesive was going to go on and it just wasn't going to look right. So I just left those off. It looks perfectly natural. The last tip I have for you guys on the body set is when you're putting on the fender flares, go ahead and put the bracket on first. Put all five screws through the bracket and through the body and then start screwing them into the outer fender. It just makes a lot easier doing it this way versus trying to go one screw at a time through three different materials to get it all to sink in. It just wasn't working for me the first go around. I came up with this little idea and it worked out since. Now, although this body is fully detailed and is beautiful to look at, fits the SEX 10 III perfectly, it is a little bit heavy. It actually weighs in, fully assembled, painted, ready to go, a little over a pound for the entire body. So that definitely is a little bit heavier than usual on a typical Lexan body. With all my electronics fully assembled and ready to run, let's check out what I chose for this build. Starting with my dig servo, I went with the Spectrum SX107. Of course, that is the recommended servo that includes that tiny little part to make everything functional as far as the servo saver for the dig. Now, I am only running a dig. I'm not running the two-speed because I am running a brushless system. So I didn't really think I needed a two-speed for this vehicle. But the 107 fits perfectly in. It'll function, set your endpoints. Everything will be fine with it. I do need a servo extension, so I'm waiting for that. That's coming in the mail here shortly. As for my ESC, I went with the tried and proven Hobbywing Z-Run XR8 SCT Pro. This is probably overkill for the SCX-10 III, but I wanted something that I wouldn't have to worry about and is fully programmable with the Wi-Fi connection it has. Now, this ESC is capable of 2S up to 4S, and I installed a XT60 connector on here for a battery that's also coming in the mail. Inside the waterproof receiver box, I have the Futaba R304SB receiver. It's of course a four channel receiver, and it has a fifth little slot there, so I can throw in some lights if I want to down the line. Although this is not the battery I'm going to run, this is a Protec RC Shorty Pack. I do plan to run their 4100 3S LiPo Pack. It's exactly the shorty size and the same weight as this graphene pack. Now what's so great about the 4100, it is a super small size and it'll give you huge run times. So I can't wait to get that pack installed in the truck as well. Going over the electronics up front, this is where all the magic happens and all the decisions have to be made. More on that a little bit later. Starting with the servo, I went with an AGF servo. I've actually ran this servo in a couple other builds at the network here, and I'm truly impressed with not only how quiet they are, but how robust these servos are. Now, this is a 36 kilogram servo, converts to right about 500 ounce inches. It is an all aluminum cased servo, it does have all steel gears, it is brushless, it's digital, it just has everything you'd want in a servo at a pretty low price, which is pretty nice. Now, I did notice I had to trim just a little bit of the under casing where this mounts into, but nothing to be throwing a fit about like some other reviewers. I just got out the Dremel, cut out what I needed to, and dropped it right in. Everything is freely moving now. Now, taking the motor off, you'll see exactly which motor I installed. Now, this is actually the Z-Run 3660. It's a 550 canned motor. I chose the 3200 only because that's what I had here at the RC Network. Now, originally, uh, and why I said that decisions had to be made, I originally put in a axe system, the 2300 540 size, which would have been more ideal for this build. But with how tall the wires were coming off the back of the motor, it just wasn't going to fit with the this motor cover. And I definitely wanted a very clean build and I wanted something where I could use the motor cover, at least initially. Maybe down the line, I will reinstall that 2300 just to get the torque that I kind of want for this build. But in the meantime, I do have this one in there and I dropped the pinion all the way down to an 11 tooth just so I have a little bit more lower torque because this is a higher speed motor. Now doing a quick weigh-in for my fully loaded SCX-10 III. I think the only thing I'm missing is that servo extension wire. And this thing weighs in at 7.441 pounds. So definitely a heavy rig. As promised, here's a look at my SCX-10 III versus my TRX-4. Now I am running almost the exact same size tires, 4.75. I have the BFG crawlers on the TRX-4 and of course the stock ones on the SCX-10 III. Now, of course, the biggest comparison is going to be the portal axles on the two vehicles. Of course, they have some other similarities, but of course, Axial SCX-10 III, this is the first portal rig that is a scaler, unlike the Capra, that was a little bit different. But on the TRX-4, that's been out for quite some time. So let's take a look at the ground clearance on these two vehicles. 
Now I just have a standard 540 sized hobby wing motor just to do some comparisons here. The overall can size is right over two inches. It's like two and a sixteenth. So uh, that'll give us some good idea as far as what the size is to the bottom of the pumpkin on these rigs. Now let's go ahead and start with the TRX4. I'm gonna slide this thing all the way in and it does hit the very bottom of the pumpkin. So right there you're seeing it's probably right about two inches as far as the ground clearance on my rig. Now flipping it over here to the SCX-10-3, sliding the motor in, it clears all the way underneath the bottom pumpkin. So this one's gonna be right about two and an eighth inches as far as the ground clearance to the bottom of the pumpkin. So definitely a little bit higher in the SCX-10-3. All right, so what are my overall thoughts of the SCX-10-3 kit version? Now the first thing I wanna start with was a couple of negatives. Now the first thing was the fitment of some of the electronics, of course. Any good hobbyist can kind of get their way around that and have some different options as far as the motor placement and also the servo. Nothing that a Dremel cannot find your way through on. The other negative was some of the instructions for the SCX-10-3. There was just a couple bobbles, nothing like what we saw in the Capra. Definitely an improvement from the Capra, but still some bobbles that a new hobbyist just wouldn't get around initially. And finally, this is an advanced build. This is definitely not an easy put it together in a day build. The body probably took me just as long as it did the entire chassis. So keep in mind that when you're building your SCX-10-3. All right, so what about positives? Well, this thing is oozing with positives. Of course, it's the third generation SCX-10, so it's definitely gonna give you a lot of bang for your buck. They've done a lot of market research. They're kind of last to the game with the portals, but they have lots of detail in this rig. You can not only use a two-speed, you can use a dig, you can outfit all different sorts of electronics for this thing and make it your own. The body has so much detail, 55 holes just cut into the body. That tells you how many parts went into this body to make it as real as possible. You do have the real motor cover that's on the inside, the LS swap motor cover. There's just lots of detail coming out of this rig. And lastly, this rig is just gonna look great on the trail and I can't wait to do it myself. I've already seen some trail photos of this thing out there and I can't wait to pull the trigger on mine as well. So on this build, if you can get past those couple of negatives that I mentioned earlier, this thing is definitely worth it in the end. And I'm gonna say it right now, this is probably one of the best releases for 20 2020 thus far. Well guys, that is my full reveal of the SEX 103 from Axial Racing. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this kit. Do you already have one? Are you already building one? Is one coming in the mail? Are you picking one up from your local shop? Love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, it gets out to more and more people, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And finally, my name is Rich. Thanks for watching. Thank you.